What is going on, my beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Pivot Mindset Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm your host. And y'all, man, I know it has been a while. It's been a minute. Uh, I don't. I think it's probably been like four or five months or something like that since we've released a episode. We've been a little bit on a hiatus, but I'm telling you, um, man, I've got so much to share, so much to talk about. Uh, and really, we're going to come in hot because uh, I literally like two minutes ago, just hit post on a major pivot. And I want to be able to break that pivot down in this episode. And essentially the pivot is how I just dissolved, how I quit my six figure coaching business. And, um, it's a, it's a major step in my life. This is, this is a huge step. Um, because there's, it, there's a lot that went into making this decision a lot that didn't feel like just finishing a business to start a new one, but a, a lot of this feels like a whole new season, a whole new direction that God is shifting and changing my life into. Um, no lie, I feel like this season, this decision is going to shape the next five to 10 years of my life, like no joke. And so, uh, man, I want to just be able to share this whole thing with y'all, um, break this all down, uh, because y'all know, you know, I, I'm the pivot guy, you know, we talk about life is all about the pivots and those who decide to make the pivots decide to become successful, right? Like uh, it's all about the pivots. And I think so much of our life is how we process through moments of transition, how we process and can identify when God is calling us to do something and when God is calling us not to do something. And there was just this whole process that I had went through and I felt that I would do my audience and you guys a disservice if I didn't share that experience and how I kind of came to this decision um, because I think it, it can encourage you like no matter what decisions you're processing through right now in life. Um, I just found myself going through many phases to understand what God was calling me to in this season. So uh, I want to be able to break that down. I want to be able to share that the story of kind of how I got to this decision. And like I said, my goal is that you guys can take something from this to be able to apply to your lives to be able to make decisions, whatever those decisions are. So uh, let me take a step back a little bit. Let me give you guys a little bit of context before we get to the decision that I just made. So, uh, man, I started my coaching business in September of 2021. And when I started this coaching business, uh, it was right, right off of the back of feeling like I had another chance at life. No lie, y'all. Um, man, right before in August of... 2021, I was hospitalized with COVID. Um, I was in the hospital for like seven days. My wife and I, we were celebrating, I think our eight year anniversary. And, um, I had got, we both got COVID and I just took a turn for the worst, healthy, no pre existing conditions, no asthma, nothing that the doctors like would have felt would have caused it. I just, my, my oxygen started to drop no matter what level of oxygen they put me on. It couldn't keep up. And so I was almost landed on a respirator. Like it was, it got, it got pretty bad. And, um, really through that time, not only was God healing my physical body, but God was also healing my soul. There had been so many things, um, that I felt like had kept me and helped me back when it came to taking the kind of leap that I needed to take to start pivot. Um, before I started pivot a couple years before that, um, I had, I was real estate investing full time and, um, I had grown that business and that business just really kind of almost kind of suddenly came tumbling down. It, it didn't finish. It didn't end. It didn't go the way that I thought it would go. And there was just so many aspects of that process of failing a business of a business, not going the way or the direction that you wanted it to go. That it just, it like when you, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're growing businesses, um, so much of who you are and so much of your life gets wrapped into it. And when it comes tumbling down, not only do you feel like you lost at the business, but you also feel like you lost at life and a piece of you because you've invested so much. It's kind of like a failed relationship or a failed marriage. Like so much of you dies with the thing because you've, you've, you put so much into it. And so I, so I was kind of grieving that still, uh, years later. And so, uh, but man, when I was in the hospital, God began to just really heal my soul and get me really in the place where all those limiting beliefs began to sh be stripped off of me. And like when, once I left the hospital, I had this, I had this, this, this power in me that 
and really this confidence that said, man, I, I don't know what it's going to end like, what it's going to be when I start it, but I know that I've got a new lease on life. And I felt like getting out of the hospital, man, it was like a second go around. I felt like almost God had gave me another shot, another chance to take risks and be all that he called me to be. And so he gave me the name Pivot. Pivot was a name that I believe God gave me um, to call the business because it because in that moment, I had a choice to decide if I was going to let what happened in my past determine what I would do in my future or if I was going to take the moment to take the pivot and to, to, to know that, hey, yep, that didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but I can pivot and continue forward and move in a different direction. And so that's, that kind of birthed the name of Pivot. Pivot Business Services is the name of uh, my coaching business. And, uh, and so I started that company and I started in September and uh, it just grew so quickly. Uh, God had truly blessed it. Um, I had hired a wonderful coach. God had blessed it. I had learned all the things to build the business out and to help people. And God was just blessing it. And I grew it to a multiple six figure business was doing multiple six figures per year in the business. And um, man, it was just such a blessing. And I felt like I was truly doing what God had placed me on earth to do. I'm naturally a learner. I love to teach. I love business. Um, I love communicating. All the things, all of my giftings were kind of intertwined and wrapped into this business. And, um, and so all great, all great and dandy until uh, we moved to Charlotte. And uh, we've been in Charlotte for about a year now. And uh, man, we've been a part of a church plant here and the church has been growing like crazy. And I knew that when I moved to Charlotte that God was going to be doing something new in my life and in the life of my family. I knew that our move to Charlotte was going to be a, 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 a growth step. It was going to be a season in our life where God will begin to grow us. I just felt that before moving here, I felt that that would be the call. That would be what we would, what, what our assignment would be is to really ro with roll with God and grow with God, if you will. And, um, y'all, the journey here in Charlotte has been absolutely mind blowing and God has just been growing us in so many different ways and shipping and shaping perspectives and all that kind of stuff. Well, man, about Jul June, July ish time frame, man, I just started to feel a little bit of unrest with the business and it wasn't really based on like outcomes of the business. The business was still doing well, still making really good money from the business. It had nothing to do with that. I just started to feel like a slight nudge in my spirit that man, something's different. Something's changing. And over time that nudge just began to get louder and louder. And, um, man, and so around July and August, I began to pray and fast and y'all, no lie, I've literally been praying and fasting since like August, like late July, early August about this season. When I first started fasting and praying, I wasn't necessarily fasting and praying about what I would do with this business. I was really fasting and praying about the the discontent that I started to have in my heart and the, the, the seasons changing. Like, you know how, um, you know how like when you're going from like summer to summer to fall, you start to feel that Christmas in the air, you know, you start to get that little cool breeze in the evening, all that kind of stuff. That that's what my life felt like. I felt like the seasons changed. Things begin to shift and things begin to to go another direction. And so I just began to fast and pray. It wasn't necessarily about the business. It was just about life and God helped me get clarity and understanding of what the season is and what he would want me to do and what he's calling me to do and all that kind of stuff. And my wife and my kids and what he's calling for our family. So it just was multifaceted. And um, man, that that hunch just began to grow. And long, like, and after a while, it began to get become very clear that God was wanting to do something and change something within my business. And um, and so that began its own journey. I began now I began specifically praying and fasting about the business and what God would have me to do with it. And I began two-way journaling and talking to my pastor and talking to close friends and family and talking to my wife. And I just began this journey of, Lord, help me to get very clear on this. Because for me, um, this business is a big aspect of my life, not only time-wise, but also financially. Um, I've been able to use this business to fund a lot of my life and lifestyle and um, I knew that whatever God was calling me to do with it, it would it would not just be like a hobby thing that I just put it down, but it would be something that could be potentially life altering. It could be lifestyle altering, all those things. And um, and so, man, speed up a little bit. 
I went to something that our church has and it's called freedom conference. And I'll spare you a lot of the details that was in freedom, but we got to this aspect of the conference where we just be the, the topic began to talk. We begin to walk through uh, rejection and, um, and like what rejection is. And I began to really sit with the fact that, man, I've had, and I didn't know this. I didn't know that I had rejection issues. I didn't know that there were things on the inside spiritually that I had like a spirit of rejection in my heart and in my soul. And that that spirit was speaking to a lot of what I was doing, not out of, um, not out of faith, not out of belief, not out of call, not out of purpose, but ways that I was moving out of a response to the rejection that I had in my heart. Let me break that down a little bit further. Meaning there's aspects of specifically my business that I was doing, not because I was purposed to do it, but because of fear of rejection, because of the fear that, you know, if I started, stop this business, if I stop making the money from it, that I wouldn't be liked and I'll be rejected by people that I love. And just all these things that are attached to this rejection, the spirit of rejection. And man, in that moment at that conference, this, and this y'all, this was probably, I have, again, I've been fasting and praying about this thing for months. It was at the conference that I got the specific word of God when I felt like God said, it's time to let it go. And, um, and I got a word, actually, I got a word from uh, a pastor who um, he said, hey, man, I see you right now. And it looks like there's a river that wants to flow, but there's a dam currently stopping the river from flowing. And there, it, the dam is cracked. Like, so there's water seeping out in aspects of the dam. But I believe that God is ready to release the dam and it really, for me, it really meant a surrenderance to God. And, and, and what that meant for me, it, it spoke to my heart that, man, there were so many things, there's so much of the flow that God wanted to do through my life, but I was putting a dam in place and I was stopping what God wanted to use my life for and use me for. And, and I was stopping the flow. I was damming up, right, his, his power, his authority and how he wanted to use my life. And it was in that moment that that word spoke to my soul. It spoke to my spirit. And I just completely surrendered to what God wanted to do. And in that moment, I felt like God was telling me to dissolve this coaching business. And, um, man, this is, like I said, literally a couple minutes ago, I literally just put posts. As I'm doing this podcast episode right now, I'm seeing, I'm get, I've got text messages from people who are sending me notes text messages and comments and all that kind of stuff just on how they're praying for me and supporting me, which is huge. But I wanted to do this episode because this was a very hard season of life. And this still is a very challenging season. This is the, this is the most funnest, craziest, scary, confused season I've ever been in my life. Um, this is the most fulfilled and scary I've ever felt, right? There's just, there's almost so many conflicting feelings through what I'm processing right now. And I want to encourage you because um, I started to think like there were, I, I was fortunate enough when I was going through this and as I'm going through this, that I have a phenomenal community that's been able to hold my hand and help me unpack and walk through this journey with God and with my community and who he's placed in my life. There's so many people out there that I I'm confident that they don't have this kind of support when it comes to decisions like this. And so I think a lot of people, um, they don't make these kinds of decisions. And this decision that I'm talking about is, may not be a sexy one. Like when I say this decision is, is lifestyle altering, I may have to sell stuff to, 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 um, keep up and to get back into a lifestyle that what I'm doing right now could afford. Like I may have to I may have to go without, I may have to change. Um, I just may have to change things. I may have to alter a lot of my life to be in the will of God. And what I've realized, I just come to grips with this y'all that I'd rather be in God's will and peaceful than out of his will, hustling, grinding and trying to make two plus two equal four. Right. And so um, I want to, I want to walk you through because there are some scriptures that 
I want to walk you guys through a couple of scriptures that really um, just were a blessing to me through this season. And I'm hoping that maybe you guys may find some encouragement. If there's anything that God is asking you to do in your life that may feel hard, I, I like I want you to be able to use maybe some of these scriptures to speak to your heart uh, and maybe help you process through. Here's one that really um, was very valuable to me. And that is a uh, very, very popular passage of scripture in Matthew six, verse 33. It says, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I have felt that a lot of my life that when it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added I felt that I had seek, I was seeking all the things that was supposed to be added that, that instead of me seeking him and his kingdom, that after a while it got to, man, I'm seeking out all the thing that's supposed to be added when he just called me to seek him and his kingdom. And, and once I did that, he, God would add the things to me. And I, I don't have to add these things to my life. I don't have to add the houses. I don't have to add the cars. I don't have to add the vacations. I don't have to add what like the watch. I don't have to add the things that I want. All the all the things that I have desire for, God can add those things if I first seek him, his kingdom and his righteousness. And so it it helped me to put my life in the right frame. Like, nope, let me first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that was one scripture that um, and I just meditated on so much throughout this experience. I've got another one. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 7. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, um, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. So not, tr- not just trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, but whose trust is the Lord. Like it's not... I don't have time to break it down, but not only is your trust in the Lord, but your but the Lord is your actual trust. Like the, you have no trust outside of God, right? So blessed is that man. And then it says, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought, nor cease to yield fruit. Y'all, this this verse right here, this scripture, um, this scripture, man, I there was so much of my faith that that needed this verse, that that yearned for this verse. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple things that that really spoke to me about it because um, in verse eight, so Jeremiah 17 verse eight, it says, "For he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream." And there's so much of this season of my life right now that feels like I'm an ex- I'm extending a root to the stream, not because like and so for me the word that God had gave me was that droughts bring and require extended roots. I repeat that again that droughts whenever you're in a drought in your life it requires you to extend your root. It, it, it requires you to go deeper in life, go deeper in the things of God, go deeper in your word, go deeper in your faith, go deeper in praying and fasting and believing and go deeper in, in, in being used by God and serving God and serving his kingdom, go deeper with being generous. Like I had to, in this season of my life, go to a depth that I didn't know I had, but it's a drought that pushed that depth out. And so some of some people out there, you 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 wait, you may not um, ever get to a place in life. You'll get to a place in life where it forces you to extend your roots, and it's the extending of roots for me that made my relationship with God much deeper, and it helped me to understand really His will and perfect plan for my life, and me now extending those roots now mean that my root, my roots wouldn't have been extended had I not gone through a drought, had I not gone through something that forced me to persevere and push deeper into the things of God. And so some of some people right now are in a season where 
God is God is placing them in the moment where their roots need to be extended, but they're asking God to bring the water to them when God is saying, no, I need you to learn to grow, to extend your roots. And again, what is extending your roots? Extending your roots is pressing as you draw near to God, God draws near to you. It's pressing into the presence of God. It is, um, it is, it is praying. It is fasting. It is being more intent about reading God's word and, and, and being more intent into the things of God. It is also blocking out the distractions and, and, and blocking out noises and people and environments that deter you from the wisdom that God is trying to impute to you in that particular season. So Jeremiah 17, 7 through 18, absolutely blessed my life. I'm not done. Okay. Again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give y'all, um, three, four months of just pressing into the presence of God, uh, and how I had to press through. Uh, let me give you another one. Uh, Psalm 37 verse 18, it says, uh, but the Lord knows the days of the blameless and in their abundance, will be forever, or sorry, the Lord knows the days of the blameless and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil and in the days of famine, they will have abundance. And in the days of famine, they will have abundance. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil and in the days of famine, they will have abundance. That verse spoke so much to me because Um, for me, at least what the enemy has been trying to tell me and trying to speak into my life is that I will, that this decision will land me in famine. The enemy has been trying to speak to my heart that this, what I've been processing through will, will land me into a barren season, into a season of, of, of nothing that I'll be broke, that I'll end up homeless, that I'll lose a car, that I'll lose, uh, like I'll just lose all like I'll lose everything. That's what the enemy has been trying to tell me. And this verse has spoke to me because it says in the days of famine, they will have abundance, meaning that just because um, you have less doesn't mean you won't have more. What do I mean by that? Just just because you're in a season where it may look like externally you have less, it doesn't mean that internally you won't have abundance. Um, and so for me, God has really been shifting my focus off of what I have and more of my focus on who I am and who I'm becoming and who he's building me to be, because I believe that the vision that God has given me has, is still coming to pass. And it's a big vision. It has, it's a big, bright, shiny vision. It's got big, hairy, audacious goals attached to it, but I'm confident that that vision he's still watching after his word to make sure that it comes to pass. I'm confident that his, 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 his word is yes and amen. I'm confident in those things. And so if I'm confident in the vision still being true, if I feel like abundance is here, it must mean that I have a wrong perspective of it. It it must mean that I'm thinking improperly about it. And so in the days of famine, you will have abundance in the days of famine, you will have abundance. And so it means that even when I, even when it may look like I'm supposed to have little, or even when most people around me going through the situation I'm going through are supposed to have little, doesn't mean that it has to be my birthright. Doesn't mean that that's what I have to go through, what I have to experience. Um, and so that's been such a blessing to me that in the days of famine, that you will have abundance. And then I'm gonna give you the last one, um, the last verse that's really been uh, speaking to my soul is in uh, Malachi. A lot of people know Malachi 310 um, as the tithing scripture, but it spoke to me uh, in a very different way throughout this season of my life. Um, Matthew Malachi 310 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. And then it says in 11, once you do that, then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. Throughout this entire season of my life, I've been fasting and I've been intentional about being generous to God and being 
sacrificial with my giving and sacrificial with um, uh, just being just just not letting this because what what often happens is when you may expect famine or expect a, a drought, you may begin to store up for yourself treasure. You may begin to put extra money in savings. You may give little and you may um, start to lessen how you serve other people and what you do for other people. But in this season, I've been really intentional about doing the opposite. I've been intentional about just giving to God and because I know that he will rebuke the devourer because there is a devourer that desires to sift me like wheat. But Jesus says, but I have prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. And I believe if I want, if I want the devourer rebuked in my life because I want the abundance from God, that it means that I have to give, right? Why not watch out why, the scripture talks about why watch that. I don't pour out a blessing that overflows. And, and so, so even during that season, I, during the season, I've also been giving and I've also been sacrificial with my giving and it's, and it's giving in a way that, um, not, not in a way that compares my giving to other people, but in a way that, uh, allows me to, to see the faithfulness in God in my life based on what he's called me to do. And so I wanted to give you those scriptures because I didn't want to just tell you the story without giving you the, um, the recipe, if you will, for what I've gleaned on and what I've hung on and the words that I have, um, really fashioned my life around in this season. And so, um, that's, that's, that's it. Like, that's that's this season that I'm in. Uh, here's the thing. I'm not sure because people keep people are asking like, all right, like so you are dissolving the business. So as of January 1st, 2024, I will no longer be a business coach. They're saying like, all right, now what? Like, what, what are you going to do now? And here's the answer. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have no idea. I have some inklings. I have, um, some suspicion on what God wants to do in my life, but also in this season, I can naturally be a planner. I could be a person that loves to plan things and loves to be so forward facing and forward looking, I should say, and having a plan and having a structure and get and and I, in this season, I'm intentionally not doing that, which is so opposite. And it's, it's, it's flexing a muscle that is so new to me um, because I truly am in a season where I am waiting for God to open up doors and open up opportunities. I'm not pushing my way or forcing my way in any doors or any opportunities. I am obeying the word of God. I'm obeying God and what he told me to do. And I'm being faithful over what he's given me. And I believe that if I'm faithful over little, that he'll make me rule over much. And I'm just being faithful over what he's given me. Oh, I'm being faithful over my family and what he's called me to be as a husband and as a, as a father, I'm being faithful over my responsibility um, at the church that I serve in and serving in that capacity and doing my best to serve people as they uh, uh, come into a relationship with God and, and find them a church home. So I'm being faithful serving at my local church, right? And I'm, I'm just being faithful for what God has given me. I'm being faithful for uh, faithful over the relationships that I have, uh, the clients that I've been able to work with in the past, uh, I don't, I don't have the future all figured out. Only thing I have figured out is I'd rather be in the will of God and peaceful and sleeping at night than trying to add all these things to it, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added and not me trying to add all the things. Um, so I am, I am open to what God wants to do in my life. Uh, I, I do believe that this next season is going to be me uh, pouring and pulling more from the deeper well that I have within me, which is uh, my heart for ministry, my heart for people, my heart for the Bible, my heart for the things of God, my heart for encouraging people, strengthening people, discipling people. I do think that God is going to pull from those areas of my life, but that's all I got. I, I don't have the, the clear inked out, drawn out plan. All I have is a word from God and a, and a step of faith that I'm taking as a result of the word that God had given me. And so here we go. 
Here we go to a new season. Here we go to a new journey. Here we go to a new pivot. Um, I thank every single person who has hung around. Um, you know, some of you guys have been messaging me on Instagram and Facebook and things of that nature on like, hey, when's the next podcast coming out? When's the next episode? All that kind of stuff. Um, we're back. Uh, this isn't the way that I wanted to come back. I wanted to do a whole new release, a whole launch. I wanted to make it a whole big thing, but we just gonna come back. And, um, because I believe that I'm just going to move and again, be faithful over what God has given me, which he's given me a podcast. He's given me this platform and this platform will remain. I do believe that God is still calling me to, uh, help people make pivots. I, I am, um, going to continue to do that and do that in a way that I believe he's called me to do it in a unique way. I'm going to create content in a unique way. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the season that we're in. Super excited about it. Um, here's my ask. Here's my request that you would just pray for me during the season. Um, I ask that during this season, um, that you would, you would pray for me that God would continue to speak to my heart about like how to walk this journey out. Uh, and then I, my other piece is just continue to be on a, along for the journey. Uh, I'm just thankful that I built a platform that I have. I pray that this platform is more built around me and not necessarily like what I've done, like my business, but I, I pray that the platform is more built around me, but we're going to see, we're going to test it. If, if people hang around for the others, to, for the, the stuff more centered around me and not necessarily the business stuff, that'll, that'll be our, that'll be our, our, our sign that, that, uh, this, this podcast and everything else, uh, will hang around as a result. So, um, but yeah, that is it. Um, feel free, drop any questions you have, whether that's, um, on YouTube where this is going to be posted as well as, uh, where you can listen to all podcasts or Spotify, Apple music, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, man, it's been 32 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up, but I appreciate you guys for hanging with me. I appreciate you for listening, checking out this episode. We are back. Welcome to the pivot mindset podcast. And, uh, all right, signing out. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.